A lot of people are like getting sick and they're like getting scratched and they're bleeding, but let's let's have fun. Yeah, but did Kanye tell you that he licked our lollipop? Did he? Yes. That's how he made a lot of money. <laughs> Do I have to give it like a lick ooh, or can ooh. I just give it like a little? Give it the Gluck mm. Gluck 5000. <laughs> you get it all the way in there. Annabelle. Excuse of me? I yeah. was, um, <laughs> you mean you want to breastfeed Annabelle? You did see a woman that was pale in the white face, yellowish eyes, and she was staring straight at you. There was a black hand with sharp claws that came up and grabbed your ankle. You were woken up with scratch marks on your back. You did have a handprint on your inner thigh, and you also had nightmares of a demon sitting in the corner of your dining room. And you also did have the instance where your great grandmother banishing it back to hell. All of those things. That is hundred percent true. Welcome to Haunted Homies, a podcast dedicated to building the paranormal community and hearing terrifying stories from those within it. Please make sure to subscribe as we are planting one tree for every new subscriber. Our goal is to plant 500,000 trees by the end of 2023. That we're so far apart from each other. I know. I've never been this far away from you. Normally, kinda... normally we're in bar stools and we're like super close to each other, but obviously the stage is enormous. We've been doing investigations, obviously, every night after the live shows. Yeah. And we've decided to start opening the veil, mm-hmm. um, which has been taught to us by Patty, yeah. Patty Negri. Um, but obviously our adaptation of it. Um, we... <laughs> Oh, oh, I got to talk about what happened last night. Oh, okay, okay. I have to talk about what happened last night. Okay, okay, you can tell them. Okay, before we get into like the, the, the scarier side of what's been happening with opening the veil, <laughs> every night we open the veil, we raise the energies, we loosen everyone up. It's a huge part of how we start. And then everyone knocks and introduces themselves and not only introduces themselves, but states their intention for the evening. Like what kind of activity do you want to have happen? Like, do you want to be spoken to? Do you want to interact with a child spirit? Do you want to like see the REM pod go off? And one dude goes, I want to see some ghost titties. Dead ass. Dead ass. Opening the veil. And and we say, what do you want to see? I want to see some ghost titties. But here's the thing. We always set up uh, up the REM pod when we start. And he was probably person, let's say, 13 out of 18. As he says, I want to see some ghost titties. The ghosts were like, woo! And the REM pod goes off. The REM pod started going off to ghost titties. Swear to God. The amount of times that we've opened the veil and nothing happens. And this whole time, all we had to say was we wanted to say some ghost titties. Dude, like, all we have to do is just bring some beads and just start throwing them. <laughs> Jerry. Jer- <laughs> yeah. That would have been so much fun. But here's the thing. Then, after he said it, five people go around. I'm the last one to introduce myself. And I'm like, all right, he can't be funnier than me. That's not okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all all right, not only do I want to see some ghost titties, but I want to get hit with the ghost dick across the face. And the REM pod just starts going off again. It goes again. off. It goes off. And we're just talking about how funny it would be if just like paranormal activity and you just see someone's face just like, <laughs> just getting motorboated <laughs> by the ghost. You're just walking into a building and you're like peeking around and out of nowhere, it's just. <laughs> <sighs> no, it's not. It's literally not fair though. Like every time I open the veil, I'm so serious because it is serious and like, it really does help activity. And every time I do it, I'm so respectful. You know what I mean? I'm like, hey, if there's any spirits here, would love to communicate with you. We mean no harm at all. If you can interact with our devices, we'd love to play games with you. And I get nothing. What do the ghosts want? Ghost titties. I hate it. That's why you're too serious, dude. You're like, I want to have a meaningful conversation. And they're like, dude, we just want to have some fun. A one night stand. (laughs) You're like, I'm looking for a long term relationship. I want to know all about you. And the ghosts are like, dude, I just want you to put your REM pod in me and get out. (laughs) Like, that's the difference, dude. Like some of these ghosts are like, I just want to have a little bit of fun. And here you are like, okay, but do you want to have kids? And like, you know, (laughs) like you're trying to get to know these ghosts. And like, dude, just. You know, do what you want and leave. Uh, I know, I know. But <laughs> to speak on the serious side of it, yeah. since we've been doing this tour and since we have been opening the veil, because I've had Patty teach me new ways to really make sure the veil's open. And this entire tour, every time after we open the veil, the activity, honestly, there's some spots we're going to where we've been in the past and the activity is five times crazier now. I don't know if it's because we're just getting better at ghost hunting or it is because of the veil, but like, we'll talk more about it later guys. But like a lot of people are like getting sick and they're like getting scratched and they're bleeding, but let's, let's have fun. Let's not get into that right now. And even last night he, uh, abandoned 
his group. We don't have to talk about you that. You left them. He literally ran out. Ensign Grist Mill in Utah, he ran out. And I'm with my group, and I'm like, what are you doing here? I thought he like went to the restroom. And he, I won't say what it is yet, but basically he was like, I got real scared. And I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool, but like, where is everyone else? He's like, oh, they're inside doing the S's method. I'm like, what the f? I asked you, them you're to the leave. most experienced ghost hunter yeah. veteran, and uh-huh. you left eight people in the building to die. No, that was their decision. I <laughs> told them, I was like, after what just happened, we should leave. And everyone said, no, we want to stay and keep going. So I left. And you should have, uh, yeah, you should have stayed with them, dude. No, not after what I heard. Do you know how scared I was? I literally had to like threaten him. I'm like, do you, do you want to take my group and I have to go in and go handle yours? And he was like, no, I'll go back in. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, do you want to switch groups? I'll go in there. And you're like, no, I'll do it. And then 20 minutes later, you came back out and you're like, it happened again. Yeah, no, it was demonic and it was like targeting me. So I got scared. Don't bully me. Leave me alone, guys. Well, we'll get into that further because we, uh, we obviously we're at Piper Opera House. We're in we're in uh, Virginia City. We're in mm-hmm. Nevada. There are some local uh, ghost hunters here that happen to also be YouTube creators. Yep. they're really nice dudes. We just hung out with them for a little bit, so we're gonna bring them out in a little bit, and we kind of want to talk to them about it, get to know their story, maybe their views on it. Yeah, uh, you know what I mean, and see how they feel about the paranormal side of things and if they've had encounters like that. But first, we're going to play a game. We, want, we like to have fun with the shows before we get deeper into the paranormal. So I'm sure everyone knows there's a game called Would You Rather, right? So we're going to play a game called Would You Rather, but our version of it is it's versus. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you pull two things and we have to just like debate. No, we pull two things and I have to assign one of them to Corey and he has to defend that and convince all of you why you would rather do that thing. And then, and then whatever I have, I have to argue against and convince all of you, would you rather do this thing? Yeah. So we, whatever f***ed up is in here, <laughs> we have to try and justify why it's the better choice. Yeah. So we played this once before. Oh, boy. It got rowdy really fast. Yeah. We made it. <laughs> you guys just want to hop in now and just do it right off the bat? Yeah. All right. Okay, come on out. All right, come on. Twin Paranormal, everyone. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. wait. Oh, wait, do you want music? I'm going to turn around. We're going to come back out. Uh Uh-huh. We want some music. Okay, all right. Can we give them music again? Twin Paranormal, everyone. (laughs) Come on, applaud. What the? Wow. I'll take your seat, bro. Wow. Wow. Damn. Okay, Marty. That was dramatic. I think, I think we can all fit like this. this We're is about to break this thing. Oh it's going to happen. Dude. Ryan, River, Wyatt, thank you guys for, for joining us, man. Appreciate it. Thank you for having us. You guys are locals, right? You, this is your stomping ground? Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, it was good. We got a lot of locations done, but now it's time for more. And all we have to do now is travel, which well, kind of sucks. Virginia but. City is very, very near and dear to our heart. It's, it's mm-hmm. been our success story pretty much. Okay. So, it's it's been a pleasure for sure. Uh, you guys have to hold the mics like really close to your mouth. Really oh, close? Yeah, yeah. Basically, oh. swallow them. Oh. Yep. <laughs> yep. Don't Riley read it, dude. <laughs> God damn! <laughs> okay, give it to me. <laughs> Welcome to our paranormal podcast. Uh, uh, hello, everybody. Riley Reed's seen a lot of paranormal things. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Um, we're not that type of people. Nothing will get held back. So. Oh, you're not that type of people. Great. Let's okay, let's you. have no the filter. sensor bar ready for this episode. No um, all right, so now you understand how the game works. I think it's Corey and I versus the three of you. Yeah. You know We're what? teaming up against y'all. I think we should give you guys one of our guys. Wait, why? I That'll make know. it harder, I feel like. <laughs> It'd be cool. Let's, let's, let's do this. If you lose a round... Oh, you're going to lose. Excuse me? You're going to lose. You're going to lose. All right, here's the thing. I must ask all of you, honestly, you must give an honest answer to who wins the debate. Yeah, don't, don't no, go no, do that uh, No home us. team favoritism or anything like that. I, w- I want a clean, honest fight. Yeah. I want to know that when I f- smoke you guys, you have no excuse. <laughs> oh, my God. What are you smoking? Uh, n- nothing. I'm straight edge. <laughs> <laughs> Here are the two options that have already been pulled. Oh, my God. This is awful. All right. Would you rather... After you constantly lick a lollipop made entirely of Kentucky, uh, Kentucky Derby winning racehorse semen. <laughs> or <laughs> would you rather live in Kim Kardashian's butt cheek cottage she built specifically for you? I'm, I'm taking the racehorse. 
Give them the well, racehorse. Uh, give give the them the race horse. You guys want the racehorse? Give them the racehorse. Right. Okay, okay, I want anyway. the butt cheek cottage. No, it's I gave late. you. It's, it's warm. warm. No, no, no. You don't it's want warm. that. You don't want that. It's warm. <laughs> you don't want that. We're taking the horse. Hopefully it doesn't smell. So uh, you guys want to make first debate or should we make first debate? Go for it. Okay. One, who the f*** wants to lick a lollipop made of Kentucky Derby horse winning semen? Mm-hmm. I just don't even know how you're going to get your way out of that one. Versus us, it's Corey a winning and I, horse. we're living in Kim Kardashian's butt cheek cottage. She built specifically for us. Wow. Specifically for us. That means wow. one, it probably has a trampoline park. Yep. We love trampolines. Yep. You know what I mean? It's probably got Rocket League. Mm-hmm. It's probably got some like 60 inch TVs. With skate park. Exa- there's a skate park <laughs> exactly. in there. Exactly. She built it just for us. We know it's got top of the line everything. It's Kim Kardashian's. That's a big <laughs> dude, Yeah, it is. That thing's <laughs> dumped, dude. Well, for the record, it's not actually in her <laughs> uh, Have you seen like those like potato houses? Like those like air, like kind of like SpongeBob lives in a pineapple. I, I saw that episode. Yeah. yeah. It was, she, it was uh, she basically, good. she molded her for us and then built it on like oh, the side okay, of the freeway. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So it's like her butt cheek cottage. Damn, we got Yeah. Like, we really <laughs> got <laughs> out here. And so, like, look at all the benefits. Like we don't have to pay rent. Nope. We don't have to pay for electricity. Nope. We don't have to pay for AC. <laughs> it's you know a many winning solar horse panels? though, dude. We can fit so many solar panels on that ass, dude. All but think about this. Think about this. This, yeah. this, Beautiful, luscious lollipop. This is so goddamn delicious. I don't like it. Don't even think about the semen, okay? The sweat that this horse has to sweat out to win a race. I'm telling you, this tastes so good. So, (laughs) continue, continue. (laughs) Tell me more about this lollipop. I'm I'm doing my best. (laughs) Let's let's do this. How about market this to me? Market this lollipop to me. All right. How are you going to make me... What? First off, how much does this lollipop cost? Dude, do you want to know? I do, actually. $2,000. 2000 $2,000 per lick? That you get in your pocket, though. Oh, hey. wait. Oh, I get paid. Oh, yeah. we get paid 2000 per yeah. lick? Uh-huh. How many licks does it take to get to the center of this <laughs> lollipop? It how much money can I make? It depends on what's in the center. Exactly. Do I have to give it like a... Lick, ooh, or can ooh. I just give it like a little? No, little, no, 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 you know, no, dude, you got to slob way. on that thing. Mm-hmm. You go f- give it the mm-hmm. gluck gluck 5,000. <laughs> you get it all the way in there. There's no just licking that. I just love that we're in this <laughs> opera house. We've got like all these beautiful right? lights everywhere, and you're like, you got to give it the gluck gluck 5,000. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Why? What is the reason that we get paid for every lick? Why is that? Is it a magic lollipop? Marketing. Oh, it's gen- marketing. It's genetics. Every lick you take is a potential profit. It's a winning racehorse, you know? Mm. If you play your cards right, you could have your own winning racehorse. Uh, mm. Hold on. Let's go through <laughs> the biology of that statement really quick. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lick a lollipop made of racehorse semen. Mm-hmm. And somehow that's going to go into my digestive system. And won't come out. No, no, no. And it won't come out? No, no, no. Where, does the, to the brain. where does the potential racehorse come from, biologically? You just save it, right? You don't have to ingest it. Oh. You save it. So I'm a spitter, not a swallower. Yes, okay. exactly. Yes. <laughs> you save it, you know. Sour, sweet, gone. Take it, take it, down, to your, take it down to your local breeder. Uh-huh. And then you have your own winning racehorse. Opposed to, yes, you have a rent-free butt cottage and all that jazz, but... that. <laughs> okay. I'm the so, ad-libs over here right now. So what we're, what we're essentially Yo. doing is you're encouraging us to steal your product. Hmm. That's what you're encouraging us to do? No. You can't have it. <laughs> you can't steal it. Well, then... You can I'll, have a you lick w- if you're lucky. I can have a lick if I'm lucky. At this point right now, with what Wyatt's been saying, I kind of want to keep it for myself. Why are they making it? You wanted like us to sell it to you. Y'all are kind of making a good we need argument, to sell it to I'm not going to lie. Yeah, but, no. he, but here's the thing. We've lived in Kim Kardashian's butt cheek cottage for a while. For how long? Years. Um, it's for been years. years. You know years. who used nice. to always visit Kim Kardashian's? Ray J? Kanye. <laughs> now yeah. think about it. Kanye gets to come hang out. Yeah, but did Kanye tell you that he licked our lollipop? Did he? Yes. That's how he <laughs> made a lot of money. <laughs> a whole f- of money. Race horses out the. What about Pete Davidson? He's visited Kim Kardashian's. I f- it too. Everybody you know <laughs> licked the f- out of that 
And the thing is, it never got to the center. It's still there. But here's the thing. <laughs> we can say the exact same thing about Kim Kardashian's <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's also licked the <laughs> out of that and never got to the center. <laughs> it's been in her <laughs> Oh my God, dude. Oh, we're winning, guys. But we're winning. We, uh, I but can we feel have it. A, we have a trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a trampoline inside cool. we and can, the well, you can we bounce could do, off of. We could come over. We can bring the lollipop, and we could bounce the lollipop on the trampoline and wait, see who can bounce it into one of our mouths. Hold on. That would be f cool. Hold on. Yo, wait. Did the we only... just turn into a dude perfect porn channel? Exactly. <laughs> Is that what just happened? You brought up the trampoline. I'll do a f double backflip to glob suck. Oh my god. Uh, should we Nailed vote? Yo, I just I just love that like this is a perfect representation of the First Amendment freedom of speech and we got a flag I'm looking at right behind you. This whole time I'm like, thank you, America, for making this possible. Oh god. Um all right, I think we're gonna vote because there, there's no way they can all be this graphic. I think the next round can, oh, we can there's go. no way yeah. any more about Kim Kardashian's butt cheek cottage and a and a lollipop made of semen. Okay, all right, so make some noise noise for the <laughs> Kim Kardashian butt cheek cottage. Oh my god, are we going to lose? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold on. Does mm -hmm. Make some noise if you all want to lick a lollipop made of racehorse semen. Yay! What did it in? Was it the $2,000 you get per lick? Or was it just the satisfaction of y'all just love licking what sold me was the trampoline, honestly. <laughs> no, Wait, no, so no. we won your it, vote on your own argument? Yeah. <laughs> Corey so uncomfortable. I don't know. Thank I you. I don't know. Thank you. Trackside with Pete Davidson, who also licked the lollipop, doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> I think he'd actually do it, though. <laughs> How did we lose that? Dude, I'll be honest, we didn't put up that big of a fight, but I also told you guys, I kind of wanted them to win that one. <laughs> you should have you took one of our guys. It's okay. All right. No, no, we're gonna we're no. about to make a comeback. No pun intended. <laughs> if you make yeah, a comeback, make sure the lollipops involved. All right, pull All right. pull two Hit out, two. read them, and then you decide which one oh, we okay. have to boy. take. Okay. Oh boy, here we Mr. go, Mister Mastermind. Let's go. I love we'll that we those. met you guys literally an hour ago, and this is what we're talking. Actually, about. yeah, we've had weirder things though. <laughs> the lollipop wasn't come though. <laughs> Welcome right. to our paranormal podcast. <laughs> hey. This is very unusual and unexplained. <laughs> Would you rather live in a mansion for free, but twice a month you have to let a demon take over your body, oh. or cast a spell that turns all moms into Karens, <laughs> but only at restaurants? I want the Karen one. <laughs> is you that what you get? I f love Karens. Oh, no. Okay, so are you guys taking Karens? Daily basis. All right, and then we're living in a mansion. Okay. This is easy. <laughs> this one. So for us, we, we live in a mansion for free, but twice a month you have to let a demon take over you, which is me. Yes. <laughs> Minus the mansion part. Minus yeah. the mansion. Yeah. Yeah. So just, okay. All right, go ahead. No, take it from there. No, we won. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear what you have to say. Okay. Look, look, here, here we are, Corey. Not only us, any of you. This is this is for you, right? Mm -hmm. This is for mm -hmm. you all. Exactly. You all get to live in a mansion. Wow. The biggest house you've ever wanted. Wow. Massive. It's huge. It's a big house. house. You, you can take Picture. Bezos's house. Whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Star Island in Miami. Any island you want. The Caymans. Anything at all. A mansion. Everything anything. you could ever want in the mansion. Swimming pool. Beachfront. Master bedrooms. There's a yacht there, right? No, every good mansion has a boat and a limo and a wow. driver and a full-time staff. Yeah. Yep. But all you have to do is twice a month, that's it, two times a month. You can even do it in like back-to-back -back days if you mm -hmm. want, right? Get it and over a, with. And a demon just takes over your body, not your mind. No. Nope. Just your body. Yep. What is a demon going to do? Make you do yoga? Just going <laughs> just gonna to stretch you out and you're going to do back bends. You're going to crawl on the ceiling. Exactly. You still have all your same thoughts. You can still be a decent human, mm -hmm. but your body's just, your head's going to spin around. Yep. Oh no, you go see a chiropractor the next day. Guess what? You don't have to go anywhere. You want to mansion now you have a chiropractor on staff yeah yep. but guys guys what happens if this demon wants to go to a restaurant we're gonna f their day up <laughs> my karen your demon my karen's gonna beat the sh <laughs> out of your demon is this now a karen, karen, karen versus Howard. Beelzebub? is that what just <laughs> and, happened and here? you know what the fact that we can get free food at any minute would be amazing you think because so? my karen is gonna chew the 
cook. She she wants to speak to the manager. She's, she's gonna she's gonna beat their. Isn't it weird that whenever people ask to speak to the manager, they never do. They yell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No one's ever been like, oh hi, manager. Well, you know why? <laughs> because that's who we casted out, a Karen. So all those Karens that you did see, that's from us. Okay, but we never need to go out to a restaurant. We yeah. live in a mansion. We yeah. have a we, we have, have a chef. chef. We have a chef on yes. staff. Your chef is a Karen. Secretly, you guys have a restaurant where you're at. And we go there all the time. We make play days and we go and eat at your guys' place with our Karen. We don't have just one Karen either. We're booked out. How did you infiltrate our mansion? This, the demon, an idiot, let us in. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are way better at this than I thought you were going to be. Karen got us in. What I, what I don't like is how like calmly you make your debate. It makes it so like, it, you're just like, yeah, this is fact. <laughs> Fuck. Like, it's just, you're so chill with it. I'm like, bro, chill. <laughs> the restaurant that our Karen manages is where your chef studied. Mm. Mm. So Chili's. Well, if that... It, <laughs> Okay, okay. So that, that means that our chef has been under tremendous pressure. Mm. He's dealt with Karens all the time. Damn. Indeed, which makes him a perfect candidate to Yet deal he with still, us. he still cries every time. He still cries every time? Every time he cooks a meal. That's okay. He thinks of that one time. Damn, that Karen really ripped me to shreds. <laughs> Hurt my feelings. Pulled my pants down, spanked my ass a couple times. <laughs> at Chili's. <laughs> this happened at Chili's. Honestly, that whatever kind of happens sounds at right Chili's, Chili's. That kind of sounds right buddy. for Chili's. <laughs> but what is it? It only turns, is it only turn mothers into Karens? Is that what it said? No. You what did it be, say? Anybody can be a Karen. No. It, oh, it's oh, moms. moms. It is oh, moms. moms. Oh. Yeah. Mm. So we'll just make sure that whoever we hire. But did you? It isn't a mom. It's not a mom. It's no milfs allowed at our mansion. Yeah, but yeah. that doesn't matter. We but sent the mom in there. If you don't hire a mom, though, you're not going to get that... that Cooked in the kitchen, home style food. You know what I'm saying. Everybody loves mama's cooking. Yeah. What about dad's cooking? You don't think dad makes good tacos? My dad's a horrible. He can chef. grill all he wants. <laughs> he can go outside and grill all he wants. Wait. The demon is is what fell for the whole thing. I think there's a there's a problem with your with your power. What happens when everyone goes to the same restaurant on Mother's Day? Oh. You know do, what's crazy? Do all the mothers just start cannibalizing each other? <laughs> you know what's Tearing crazy? each other apart? <laughs> this, this card isn't fully specific, so I, technically we are spell casters, and we can cast any f- spell in the world. Okay, let's, but, ca- let's calm down stick to your f- but, card. But, no, but, right? yeah, let's, let's, let's calm down. The Karen thing. It's already a three versus two fight, so let's, let's calm I'm down. F- but, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, look. Here. Hi. I'm, I'm just saying it sounds terrible that on Mother's Day, when they all go to Applebee's, it's mm-hmm. going to turn into a bloodbath. Mm-hmm. I can see it now. Just one mom walking up. Can I speak to the manager? Um, why did she get her baked potato soup before I did? Yeah. You know what happens after that? It starts to get closed. Your whole place is going to get shut down. Then you guys will have nowhere to go besides our uh, mom, Karen. She'll let you in. No, we have a mansion. They do. The mansion's man- going to get shut down. I don't know where uh, uh, all of a sudden a restaurant popped up in our mansion. <laughs> uh, Some, okay, so somehow we... Eh, let's just... Chili. <laughs> we, we moved in to the mansion. So we're, we're running that. You're not allowed. Yeah, you're not allowed in. We already got Are in. Are they allowed Karen, to move into our mansion, Karen got guys? us in. Yes. Oh! oh. No, they're not. No. We're, we're already in, guys. Sorry. Does, look... First off, I know it's an even battle, demon versus Karen, but regardless, <laughs> right, both the regardless, like you're not getting in our mansion. Like we have a moat around it. We live on Star Island, okay? Yeah. yeah sorry. Like you're not just gonna pop open a restaurant in our mansion. So at this point, again, we live in a very comfortable house, don't we? Right? We all live in a mm-hmm. very comfortable house together. Mm-hmm. We have whatever we want, and we become very flexible two times a month. When we just start twisting our limbs around, but yeah. we still have perfect mind uh, mind process. You know what I mean? Yeah. We can still think of everything. Perfectly fine. Yeah, we do. We even have a room. We have a security room for those two days when we become demons. We make sure that we get locked in there and we can't leave that room. So we don't do anything bad. You know, we just get locked away for two days, two days a month. No. And then we enjoy. Yeah. No way. Hey, are, hey, are there any, no are there way, any mothers in here by chance right now? Oh, do you guys all want to be turned into a psychotic <laughs> every time you go to a restaurant? Because if so, that's what you're voting for right now. Uh, I cast the spell. He cast the spell. 
yo, we, we're just in it to win it. The only spell you can do is turning moms into Karens when they go to restaurants. Yeah, you didn't study very well yeah. at Hogwarts. What if on said Mother's Day, when they all turn into the mega and decide to go to Applebee's? <laughs> yo, mega what? like they're Megatron. What they're just if? all Transformers linking Karen <laughs> powers together. <laughs> mega transform. <laughs> yeah. They all just what? braid their hair into that same bobbed haircut, just perfectly framed around. <laughs> What if one of your transformations twice a month takes place around the same time frame and your demon body wants to go see this bloodbath at Applebee's? Ooh, that might bring some attention from the demon. No, because we're locked in a room. No. Yeah, dude. No, we're locked no, in a room. No, we no, can't. No, no. You could argue that demons do have some sort of supernatural power, you know, the super strength that you hear of. They do, style. but again, they only take over our body. Mm -hmm. And guess what controls the body? The mind. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is fair. Right? Unless you sleepwalk. But at this point, we'll just make sure we drink a ton of caffeine and we stay wide awake during the entire transformation. Yep. And then we'll just be super active. If anything, we'll get shredded. Right? We'll just hit that treadmill wow. running three minute miles. <laughs> wow. A right? mansion wow. and we're shredded? Yeah, dude. We'll have like a 72 inch box jump. Wow. Our finger strength will be insane from crawling on the ceiling. We're just going to be like amazingly strong, fit, sexy, living in our private houses. And here you are just turning everyone's mother into a Way to Why go, do I have guys. the feeling that this is already like an everyday basis for you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I just have that feeling. All right, let's, let's shred it out. <laughs> Coffee, feeling good. All right, let's uh, let's, let, let's vote on it, y'all. So uh, make some noise for Karen's. Oh, are you? <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> oh man! And make some noise if you'd all rather live in a in a mansion, but you just have to be a demon twice a month. <laughs> okay. One okay. to one, one to one, one to okay, one. Okay, I see. All right, we'll pull two, and I'm then good. this time we'll uh, we'll deal you. Would you rather breastfeed Annabelle until she's grown enough to get her driver's license, <laughs> or would you rather save your best friend's life from the roof of a thirty-story burning building, but the only way is to tie a bungee jumping cable around your scrotum slash labia? Those are great. I kind of want to. I kind of want to breastfeed Annabelle. Excuse of course. me. Yeah. I was, um, <laughs> what do you mean you want to breastfeed Annabelle? Well, like obviously we can't guys, do. We just got to hire I don't someone. Know if we want to breastfeed. Because oh yeah. Yeah. We just it got, doesn't say. It Ooh, just says breastfeed no. Annabelle. So obviously we can't breastfeed her. Correct. Exactly. Wyatt has a Wait, pretty big scrotum. I hear so. <laughs> well, the scrotum's look, not that bad. I'll be honest, dude. I would love to save your Corey life, has but not if it means getting my balls scrotum. ripped off. Who said they would get ripped off? Well, you have to tie a bungee cord around your nutsack to save you. Ain't nothing getting ripped off over here. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> you said nothing's gonna get ripped off over there? Uh, elastic nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a superhero? <laughs> you have like one of those be. rubber band balls for a scrotum, dude? <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, what do you, what do you, what do you want to give them? Uh, let's, let's do Annabelle, because you're right, we can Thank hire someone. You. Okay. It won't be us. All right. So we're going to, all right. So that means you guys have to convince everyone to save their best friend's life. But the only way to do it is to tie a bungee cord around their genitalia. All right, Wyatt, you got this, dude. Oh, God. And this meanwhile, is... all we have to do is breastfeed Annie until she's grown enough to get her driver's license. Oh. You know, here's the thing, though. Huh. The reason why, Annie, look, we've met her. Okay. We're friends. Yeah. We, we've hung out with her for a few hours, yeah. right? And that's not fair. It, it's not, <laughs> is it not fair? I mean, but that's the thing. That's why we got to hang out with her. And that's why we know that she wants to get her driver's license. Mm -hmm. She's like, I've been stuck in this box my oh entire God, I just want a little freedom. It's been a minute. I just want to <laughs> rent a Mustang convertible, drop the top, and hit PCH. Ooh, turn on you some Gwen I mean? Stefani. Yeah, just let my, let my red curls is, just blow is, in the wind. Getting you know what possessed I mean? involved, too, because uh, that could happen. No, I mean, that's the thing. That's why she's possessing people. What that's about why the milk? That doesn't make sense. You got tainted milk. You Who, too. Who's got tainted milk? You guys milk? are old. Oh, look at you, <laughs> old as bones. No, we're gonna. We can't breastfeed. Where's the milk gonna come from? Yeah, yeah. we oh, have to gonna, hire are someone. Are you gonna bottle feed? No, we're gonna pump. Damn, you guys. We're gonna pump milk, premium, grade A, two <laughs> percent. Serena Williams. <laughs> Serena Williams is gonna donate <laughs> whore breast milk, and we're gonna get Annie f ready for the world. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Annie's gonna be. Free guys. Guess what? We don't even have to open the glass case. She's just gonna uh, break her way out of <laughs> it. Uh, and guess what's okay? outside? Guess what's outside that case? She takes one step out the front door. Oh, it's an O2 Mustang. And guess what, Annie? It's yours. Yeah. 
all those car troubles everyone has every time Dan. I can't has- wait till that episode comes out. Oh, it because will. This Halloween. I'm probably gonna. <laughs> I'm probably gonna be dead. <laughs> My kids are gonna be dead, but by the time that happens. By the time Annie does bust out of that case, it's been a long time she's been inside that case, right? Mm-hmm. She's never been to school. She doesn't know what a car is. She doesn't know how to drive. Oh no, no, she knows what she's a car is. Go to the DMV and take the test. Oh, think about the priest that challenged. The priest that challenged, and Annie was just in the back seat of that car. That's why he crashed. All so, right. So the oh, reason. Yeah. Yeah. The reason. I dropped some friend, actual knowledge on you. <laughs> you guys, you guys got to understand the reason why our best friend is on top of this building. Yeah, he's got to jump, right? Well, he ended up up there because before you guys, he was doing the breastfeeding. He realized that it would never happen. Don't wink at me. Don't. He realized. Don't, don't hit me. Don't hit me with some smart ass. He, I mean, he, he just, he just, went, he fucking, just went breastfeeding. Yeah, he just went. He just went. Yo, I'm about to crush you and. Then, blinked. Don't do that. <laughs> he realized. Don't do that. Continue. That's never gonna happen because. Annabelle's a doll, and Annabelle ain't gonna grow. Oh, are, are you? Ch- you just challenged. Did you just challenge Annie? Challenged Annabelle. Oh, I'm f- ready. Yo, she about to drive to your house and drive her. Dude, Mustang, I'm ready, right? bro. Come on, bring it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, which one of you, best friend, right? Who's 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 jumping and yeah, who's who's, uh, who's oh, jumping? Oh, so it gets to be one of us. Yeah, well, you cool. have to yeah. save. Your, I mean, okay. I'm assuming you're best friends, right. unless we're gonna. Alaska like nuts. Who's got Alaska nuts? You looked at me first, and okay, I'm Wyatt. obviously not the twin. So I feel like I've been nominated to take this. Okay, from so the I am on top of this building. So I, let's let's just bring it back. I was the one who tried to, you know, breastfeed that doll. Hmm. It was a hard move to do, but now I'm on top of this building. It's burning. I'm scared. Why? Why do you keep tying our? Yours, bro. No I just want to breastfeed I just, Annie. I just gotta, I gotta bring it in. Here's, here's a question. Who here would love to actually be able to touch Annabelle? Would anyone here actually want to hold Annabelle? Guess what? Guess how you breastfeed a baby? You nice. fucking cradle it, right? And now nice. you're just cradling little Annie. And she's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Just sucking on your titty. Just getting real strong. Getting ready to just go on a road trip. You know what <laughs> I mean? If she's... A ghost titty. <laughs> <laughs> That goes oh back to the beginning. Okay. That okay. was good. That was pretty good. If she's stuck in the doll, though, how is she going to even ingest? Oh, well, well, okay. So on the side of it, there's crosses cut into the side. We'll just run like a breast pump, you know, through it and run like a little tube in there. Just enough to get her nice and soggy, right? Just, in, just enough to get her like, you know. Because she is a doll. Yeah, just get her a little energized, you know what I mean? Just pump that cotton full of milk and, you know what I mean? Just kind of. Like a bait. Yeah, just kind of, yeah, exactly. Just get her a little. Yeah, juicing get, up a vape. Yeah, Perfect. Just, just getting her primed up. And then when she trusts us enough and she's like, mm, da, da, more milk, please. You know, then we'll open up the case and we'll start coddling her. We'll teach her. Not all people are bad. Nice. Yeah. You know? I'd rather save my friend, a.k.a. I'd, hopefully my friend would save my life. Yeah, I, I, um, I don't use enough. <laughs> I don't use enough coconut oil to be able to withstand that much of a stretch. So wait, who, well, I hang the f- on. We gotta fight. Oh gotta yeah, fight yeah, for right. this, man. No, I'm, I'm letting them tear yeah, each other apart. Some... No, keep going, keep going. <laughs> yeah, take some stretching, stretching, man. Tear each other apart. Go ahead, keep going. We're gonna contact Willy Wonka. What the? F- <laughs> Bear with me. You He's don't got have that Williams laffy number. taffy stretcher. We're gonna send his <laughs> over there. Get so, his nut nice and stretched out, ready to go. Oh, right, so are you hitting up Gene Wilder, Johnny Depp, or Mr. Beast? Because those are the, your <laughs> dude. I'll take. I don't know if Mr. Beast could handle. Honestly, Deb. Mm-hmm. Deb. And he's going to help talk your friend off the... What the f***? No, dude? no, no. He's Why is Johnny building? on the building? He's gonna, he's, we're going to contact Willy Wonka. He's going to give us that magical piece of bubble gum that's going to turn me into some bubble gum. Ooh. That way I can take that stretch, just like the girl that ate the blueberry. Yeah. You know? <laughs> just like that. Y- y'all it's gonna losing happen. this argument so hard that you're talking about snacks at this point. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Yeah. We're fucking hungry, man. <laughs> I gotta get the Karen out. <laughs> Give me some food. All right, I think I think this is kind of going to be an obvious vote, is it not? Yeah, it's pretty no easy. way. Okay, would pretty you easy. would you all rather have to save your friend's life, but the only way to do it is to tie a bungee cord around your genitalia because apparently you weren't a good enough friend, and now he's on the top of a thirty-story building, mm-hmm. right? And he made sure to do it in front of you, obviously, because it's, 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 it's a burning it's building. It's a spiteful jump. It's a you, you you're making it. me do this, which implies that you're a terrible friend. I'm a great friend, I think. <laughs> All right. Or, or would you rather uh, breastfeed Annabelle until she can get a driver's license? So uh, make some noise if you'd rather breastfeed Annie. Yeah. Okay. 
or would you rather have to save your best friend's life uh, by a bungee cord on your genitalia? <laughs> Wait, were you the one with the gun? <laughs> you were the one. You, you made, hear that? You made that more fucking <laughs> loud, bro. <laughs> All right, should we do one more but speed round? Yeah, do you guys want us to do speed one more? Speed round? Yeah. All right, we'll do one more round. You guys can draw two out. Would you rather have a sleepover with Freddy Krueger or... Cast a spell that gives all toddlers super strength and extreme uncontrollable violence. <laughs> Damn. Curious to see which one you choose to keep. Think wisely. We're, we're down one here. Should we go around the corner and talk? Why are you whispering but also talking to the microphone? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you did. You were just like, what do you think we should do? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. What do you think? One. Do you, do you think what they do you can think? hear us? I don't think they can. What do you think we got strength in? Why are you still whispering? I can <laughs> hear you. <laughs> uh, which one? Which, it said speed round over here. I think, I personally, I think I want to take the sleepover with Freddy Krueger. Okay. 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 Awesome. So, okay, so we got cast a spell that gives all toddlers super strength and extreme uncontrollable violence. Do you know why we had to do that? Why, to Elton? fight the Karens that they created. <laughs> Wow. That's, that's in the past. That's in the past. <laughs> it's wow. a toddler versus Karen world. Yeah, I don't. I don't think this is that bad. That's all in the I dirt think, now, boys. I think this could actually help the planet. But if, if you think our, about it, if our Karens, if our Karens that we created are all mothers to these toddlers, they're still superior. These but that is have where no they chance. got their violence. You have created the problem in the world we live in, in which we now need to take the youth and joy away from children and turn them into little Dwayne the <laughs> Rock Johnson monsters yep. that are just terrorizing preschools everywhere. Wow. The sh thing is, I'm going to have a sleepover with Freddy Krueger. But he's I'm going to tell friend, him all right? about these kids. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be like, dude, they said that they could beat your <laughs> And he's going to be like, what? What did you say? I can beat out of them. Okay, hold on. You I'm going to send their or send him over to them. Let me let me in ask their you this: dreams. Fifteen yeah. toddlers want to stab you. You think you can take them? Real world, not even extreme uncontrolled. You think I can? Fifteen? Yeah, let's start it low. Fifteen. You think you can 15? take down fifteen okay, toddlers? Give me give me like a height. I just want to see. Hold it's on. a toddler. Like, you know, Chucky height toddler. Okay. They're gonna all what? morph together and freaking create like some mega the mega Todd. <laughs> The mega Todd? Yo, what? Freddy's what got these, that. What are these toddlers packing? What are we talking here? Little pocket knives? You oh said my stab. God. Whoa, yeah. Whoa, whoa. 15, 15 toddlers with little pocket knives. With little sw Just some coming Swiss at you. Army one knives? in each hand. One in each hand, too. Yep. Oh, they're and double fist and Swiss Army knives? They're double fisting Swiss Army knives, right? And here's the thing they don't have coordination yet, so yeah. they're just hammering Wild. away. Blind rage just trying to stab you. you what know, would you guys want? I spent a lot of time playing Mortal Kombat as a kid, and I honestly think I could take those 15 toddlers. <laughs> those kids! Oh. But, Round one. But this doesn't Fatality. say... This doesn't say 15. Mm. This says all toddlers. We were just, we were just starting at low. We were gauging you. We were just starting with a little daycare. Bring all it. toddlers. Bring that. We all got toddlers. Freddy. But, okay, yeah, yes. we're sleeping so, over with Freddy. Why do you think we could sleep over with Freddy? He Likes us. Also, We're dude, friends. kind of weird. You guys are kind of old to have sleepovers. <laughs> never seems a never little seems never too old. Weird, uh -uh. dude. Seems a little never weird. too old. Freddy? That's how Corey. strong our bond. Never is. too old. And also, yeah, it, it does. It does seem <laughs> a little weird. And for the record, you have a sleepover with Freddy. You never get to hang out with him. He only appears when you go to sleep. Exactly. Oh. So at that point, so then we're gonna be in his world, where those kids. When they go to sleep, are also sleeping. They dream, yeah. and that's when we <laughs> them up. We'll sick. We can <clears throat> sick. We can sick a Freddy on the mouth. all the toddlers at one time because they're all dreaming. They're all sleeping. Yeah. Freddy might be one person, but in the dream world, he can get them all. Well, that's actually incorrect, because we teamed up with the <laughs> U.S. government. Oh. <laughs> and we created an <laughs> army of super toddlers, <laughs> and they all are on different sleeping schedules. We got a thousand awake during you, this hour. That, you're we got that's totally thousand. fine. We, we work around the clock. These you guys toddlers ever, are taking shifts now? You guys ever played Halo? Yeah. Halo uh, 3? Master Chief? Master Chief? You ever heard of him? He was yeah. a toddler. Once. That's a big no, toddler. No, no. He is currently. He's one of our super strength. You can't bring that shit in. <laughs> <laughs> a video game? But we deserve a hand. You've Freddy. run in Willy Wonka right. and Johnny Depp. <laughs> Freddy, still right. has, Freddy still has one advantage. Like, he's not physical. 
it's he's only in your dreams and everybody's got to sleep. Mm. They can't get Freddy. Freddy can always get you. Have you ever gave a toddler a Red Bull? Oh, <laughs> it's nothing compared to what we got, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever given Freddy a Red Bull? Ooh. <laughs> and if you guys want to bring others in, we got Freddy, Jason, Who Michael said? Myers. We said you, you can't say that you got somebody and then we don't. Who do we say we got? Master Chief. No, I, I didn't say we got him. I just said that's, that's who Master Chief is. He's a toddler. Yeah. Okay, here's the thing. Okay. We live... All right. Ima- imagine this, right? Toddlers, super strong. Okay, yeah, they've got anger issues. Guess what? Maybe with such a huge demand for all these anger issues, we'll have more therapists. And then it'll be more normal for people to grow up and go to therapy. Wow. Right? So now, what do these toddlers need? What do these toddlers need? They, they need breast milk. Naps. They need naps. They so you hired, you hired that one person to, to give Annabelle a, you know, some breast Serena milk. Serena Williams. Okay. Not that one person, one of the greatest Serena athletes ever walked this earth. You know why? Because when she was a toddler, <laughs> she was extremely strong and violent. <laughs> <laughs> so she can handle them all, right? Yeah. No <laughs> That's why she was chosen. She was the first. Round, round clock, huh? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's uh, bring our old friend Lollipop <laughs> back in. <laughs> well, you want to bring the lollipop right, okay. back? Freddy Krueger got the f- lollipop at one mm-hmm. point in time. So now he is, he's just incredible. The guy can do anything. He's just rich. And let's, let's be realistic here, though, too. <laughs> Super soldier, day shift, night shift, toddlers or not, every toddler needs to take a nap, right? Now they're double susceptible to Freddy. They sleep twice as much as we do. You don't and think we have night shift toddlers? You may, but they can't, they can't help the ones that are sleeping. We'll take them out. Freddy doesn't slowly. sleep. You Systematically. think Freddy... Okay, I would say roughly there's probably 500 million toddlers on this planet. I think mathematically that would be a low-end estimate. That's a lot. You think Freddy Krueger could take down 500 million toddlers? That's every American citizen plus another 160 million. That's one and a half Americas. All right. That means we got redneck toddlers. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, you you, you also wanna, you well, have to understand. Fu- I just need Kentucky toddlers. That's with all that I need at this point. Now he has racehorse fingers. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing. So Guess, now you're screwed. Hey, here's the thing. Guess who loves candy? Toddlers. Huh. You know what they love? Freddy Krueger loves candy too. All these toddlers now licking those semen lollipops. <laughs> Wait a minute. But they can't have it. Now they're rich. They can't have it. Now they're stronger. Wait a minute. <laughs> now they're they can't have that. Sh- you can't give you can't give racehorse semen lollipops to toddlers. Super so, soldiers. That is <laughs> oh, you know you know what? You don't have to give it to them. They're super strong and they're violent. They're gonna take what they want. Freddy's super, gonna f- them up. Super strong regardless. or not, all we gotta do is lock <laughs> ourselves. Sides, dude? We live. <laughs> I mean, when you said toddler and racehorse semen lollipop, yeah. I'm switching over here. <laughs> yeah. I gotta come on this side for a minute, uh, dude. Do not come on that side, Corey. Don't come on this side, Corey. 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 We have lollipops on this side. <laughs> we got lollipops. <laughs> we got them lollipops. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <sighs> okay, sleepovers with Freddy Krueger. Or you turn all toddlers into super soldiers and help spread mental health awareness at wow. a young age. But you Freddy guys didn't Kruger, even like talk the the mental health friend. awareness, so more or less we kind of just got it in the bag. Mm, okay, think like one, LeBron James, amazing athlete, right? Freddy Krueger killed him. <laughs> just now. He's probably sleeping, dead. I thought you were going to go for the popsicle. I thought you were going to say he had a popsicle. That's, that, that's, that's fine. That's <laughs> fine. Okay. Yeah. Freddy Krueger took out LeBron James, all right? Dead. That's fine. You know, it happened. It's in the past. We couldn't do anything no, he's about with it. Us, though. To be honest, it's your fault. Ooh, it's your fault. Fight. You helped Freddie take him down. But LeBron started playing basketball probably, you know, middle school. Imagine if he started when he was a toddler. How much better of an athlete he would be. Wow. How much more entertainment there would be. Well, but you all guys have us. to go up against all the toddlers that Freddie did get because after he got them, they're now with us. Freddie doesn't turn them into zombies. He did now. What the? F- <laughs> he f- did now you just hybrided freddy krueger with the walking dead dude that guy we gave the him walking the lollipop Fred. he could do whatever the f- he wants now oh good <laughs> he got the that was lollipop. pretty good okay let's let's put it to a vote let's okay. put it to a vote all right all right make noise Freddy's if you would badass. rather Freddy's have a badass. sleepover with freddy krueger and trust that he's not going to murder you when you go to sleep your friends he won't okay okay or thank you. Thank you. make noise if you'd rather turn every single toddler into an extremely strong, m- maniacal tyrant of a perfect human. <laughs> no, what? 
I think we took that. I think we took that. I think we took that. We take it. I think we took that. Some even, of you. Even, we'll, we'll go to a recount. Enough. All right, we'll go to a recount purely based on noise. Make noise for Twin Paranormal. <laughs> that sounded louder this time. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you. Make noise for Corey and I. <laughs> Mm, I still tough. think we won. It still kind of sounded like a tie. I also I find it interesting that your half of the audience is who voted Don't louder for you. Don't make me talk to Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we. I think we Benson. Took... <laughs> what? Freddie Benson for my car. <laughs> oh, I've never. <laughs> Continue. Okay, I think I think that was a, that was a good good round of game. You guys uh, had a much more formidable fight than I thought you would have. Thank you. Thank That's you. a big boy word. We gotta fight for our <laughs> lives somehow. Formidable. <laughs> That was pretty tough. Not gonna lie, pretty tough. Okay. Well, let's let's like maybe get a little well, bit more more serious then. Do you do you want to start with what's been happening, or should we learn a little bit more about your guys' view and your stance? Because full discretion, I already said this earlier in the motorhome. Uh, I've never watched any of your videos. It's nothing against you. It's nothing against anyone. I don't fine. watch anyone else's paranormal videos, TV shows, anything like that at all. I just don't want to hijack ideas. So truly, I don't know your stance on anything. I don't even know how you guys investigate. I don't know your views on anything. But you guys have been gaining, uh, let's say, popularity, right? Because more and more and more people are like, you should collab with them, you should collab with them, you should collab with them. So obviously you guys are starting to get, you know, a little bit bigger and... Working and with our heart, sweat, and tears. Exactly. So I'm Mostly curious tears. to know, like, what's, what's your attitude towards the videos you make and your view in the paranormal? Like, why, why are you doing these videos? Like, why do you make this, this content? I mean, everybody says they love doing it. I mean, you, when you go out and get some great evidence to prove to the world that... I just did that. You know, I, I spoke to this, wherever you are, spoke to this person who has been in this home for said, you know, amount of years. You're going to get excited once you get the information, you know, what year they, you know, died there, what their name is, so on and so forth. You know, you always feel so good when that happens. And that's what always makes me continue. Always. So is it more so for like the, adre- the, the adrenaline rush and the excitement? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Definitely. And you are, I'm assuming, all believers or or any of you like me where you're on the, you choose to stay on the skepticism side? Uh, I mean, we were super skeptic. And then like the more, because we we film and bang out so many videos that it's like at some point you have to start believing, you know? If if something starts happening right in front of your face, then I'm going to say, yeah, I don't know how I can try and debunk that because we try. We'll definitely try. We all kind of gravitated towards the subject because of experiences that we had when we were much younger in life. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, obviously they grew up together, but way before we we all met each other and whatnot. And uh, one day we were kind of just sitting in the house and we were like, hey, why don't we we try this? Because we experimented with other things on YouTube at the time. And we all, everybody grows up watching the ghost hunting TV shows and all that jazz. So we gave it a shot ourselves. And like you're saying, it's almost somewhat addicting you, you get into it and you're like okay there really might be something to this and then over time it, it sort of turned into we've experienced some things that are undeniable like you can't there's no f- feasible way to explain that it has to be some sort of paranormal aspect yeah I mean like to add on to that like sometimes when you get something that's like it, it's just hard to explain because then you look up and you're like did we actually just catch this and obviously, like, you're like, are the cameras rolling right? Um, that's why we try to put, like, tons of cameras around us so that we can prove that, oh, yeah, we're not tampering with anything that we're getting. So sometimes when we get the stuff, we can't even believe it ourselves. Like, it's pretty incredible from what we've gotten. So, Do you guys do anything before you start the investigation? Because something that... We've learned recently, or I mean, we've been doing it for a little bit with our good friend Patty, and she's taught me how to do it. And during this tour, I've been doing this group circle session where we open the veil, and then we'll also put out there what we're hoping to experience tonight. And since we've been opening the veil, we've gotten a lot, very good evidence, but also a lot more of kind of like evil encounters as well. Like there's been a lot of people on this tour that have been in they're they're getting scratched you know like even like their scratches like they're bleeding we've been having people like getting sick you know like i one of the days i had a very like a dibic box fell and like i had like a random nosebleed and the same with elton yesterday he had some stuff happen to him yesterday 
And so I'm just curious, do you guys think that opening the veil does bring in more negative or good energy? And do you guys do stuff like that or have you ever? Can I touch on this? Yeah, go ahead. So we don't, every investigation we do, we don't have like a, like a ritual for lack of a better word, you know, a practice we do every single time. Um, Some investigations will notice beforehand, like our energy is off. You know, one of us might be struggling that day or, or going through something and, you know, we'll take a minute, look at each other and be like, Hey, you need to chill out, you know, calm down, focus, ground yourself. That's one of the things we do try to do most often is go in with a clear and open mind. Mm -hmm. But as far as like opening the veil or doing something specifically to try to get that connection between the two worlds more open, we've never really tried that. But personally, I think that's like a fantastic idea. I think that's crazy. The fact that that's had some success for you guys is pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that we didn't seek out. Like any chance we have to like find like an expert, we, we reach out to them and go, hey, is there anything, you know, can we, can we learn from you? Like, can we respectfully right. learn from you? Can you coach us? And like, that's something that we, we've been kind of coached on. And the, I remember the first night we ever did it with like 100% enthusiasm and respect and like genuine kind of care toward it mm-hmm. was one of the craziest things we've ever had happen that night. And because of that, like, obviously we'd, we'd go into investigations and forget every once in a while. We'd be like, oh, we should have done that. Or we'd be halfway through. Mm-hmm. It happens. And we'd yeah. be like, oh, we didn't do it. And then we do it halfway through and then boom, it fixed it. But yeah, it's something kind of like new to us. Cause like I kind of came into this more on like the technical side, right? Mm-hmm. With more of the tools and recorders and devices and electronics. So the spiritual side and understanding, right? The realms was never part of my mindset. Right. But now it's like, we're doing it every night and it's like, it's, it's strangely, like, we've had more stuff happen in these last, you know, 30 days on tour than we had, honestly, in the last five years Damn. of doing these investigations because we've kind of started adapting that practice. Mm-hmm. Sort of like a, like a meditation in a way? Oh, for sure, yeah. yes, yeah. 100%. I've also realized, though, that whenever we open the veil, the people that get affected during investigating, like the people that get sick and go throw up and the people that get scratched are the ones after we open the veil, they're always the ones that say, I give you permission to touch me. Uh, I give you hmm. permission to use my energy. So the spirits really are like listening. And I think that, I mean, last night was last night a full moon. Yeah. And last night is also when they were listening and heard us say, we want some ghost titties. And they were like, (laughs) yeah, yeah. Give me the ghost titties. (laughs) As we're having a serious talk right now. I'm trying to be so deep and serious. Every investigation that we walk into we, we don't do that, but we always go, and we're really well known for how polite we are. So we're always like, thank you, please, so on and so forth. Like the respect thing really plays into yeah. it. Like and it does, too. it does. We never you know, offer our bodies, which is fine. I mean, we've done a couple of collabs where they do that. Go ahead, you guys go ahead, do it. That's fine. Um, maybe one day we'll do it. We've never messed with a Ouija board, but the evidence that we do get is always still like top. It's always top of the line and we're always so excited. But one mm-hmm. thing I will note, when we do drive to the location, we always listen to a specific song to get hyped up. And it's, what is it? Four big guys. And they bust in my eyes. Damn, that <laughs> tastes like apple pie. <laughs> what? You guys never heard? It's three big balls. Yeah, it's three big balls. Song. Dude, it is the dumbest it song in the world. So That's your pre-Ghost Yo, Hunt song? It's well, the hype so song. We, made it, we made it as a joke, but it actually stuck. And mm-hmm. it was like some, it was some song that was trending on TikTok for a little yeah. while. And, and our buddy showed us. And I remember when uh, Josh and Seth, they were recently with us. We popped that shit on and I'm like, yo, guys, this is our hype, hype music. We're about to go film a banger. And they're looking at each other like, what the f-? But like in the end, they start like jamming. <laughs> it was on. And then we had a great investigation. It, it also has to do with how you feel before you do this investigation. Mm-hmm. You want to be hyped up. You want to know that you're going to get you know, evidence. Because if you go in there like all bummed out, say you got in a fight with somebody, it's so hard to like hype yourself back up. It really is, mm-hmm. you know, as much as you want. Have you guys ever had anything happen where it made you go, we shouldn't do this anymore? Have you had those like kind of Just, terrifying uh, moments? Two, two nights ago. Yeah. What happened? Oh God. We went to this place. It, uh, a few of you might know it. It's called the Hotel Leger. It's in, uh, we're just going to go with Moki Hill. 
because the full pronunciation is ridiculous. Mm. But it's this super, super old hotel, and it's built on the foundation of that town's original courthouse and jail from the 1800s. And some pretty horrendous stuff went down there. It was like one of the most violent towns out west in the time period. I, I believe, if I'm correct, for 17 weeks straight, it was like one man a week was killed until they made their own little vigilante army and, and took out the rest of the bad guys to solve their problem. Yeah, some of the wow. people didn't even have to do anything. Yeah. Like there was a, there's a plaque on the wall in front of the hotel and it says uh, something along the lines that there was a man just like leaning against the wall and a guy shot him point blank, just killed him. No reason, didn't even say a word to him. Wow. And so the, yeah, it was just that kind of town. There's a lot of negative things that went down there back in the day and we showed up sort of with this an invitation, if you will. The owners of the hotel pretty much gave us like the master key and they were kind of like, just, you know, have at it. There was nobody there that night, nothing. The whole place was totally open. And um, there's a few notorious stories of people encountering demonic entities or, or evil spirits there. And we definitely found it. As we were, by the time we got to the end of the night, we were trapped in one of the biggest ho rooms in the hotel that we were using sort of like a base camp. And you could hear what sounded like like something heavy and big enough to to shake the room, but it was clawing up the wall. And you could, yeah. it was so loud you could track it just with your ears. And, and went yeah, up and Wyatt followed it to with the his room. camera. Just followed where was the noise was going. One of the scariest things like we've ever experienced. And I'm, I'm pretty like grounded. I'm pretty, not to toot my own horn, but I'm, I stay pretty calm in some gnarly situations. And that one was like bad for me. I was ready to go after that one. Well, not only that, our device said, I hide in the shadows. Yeah, that was weird too. And, and by trapped, you felt as though if you were to try and leave something not great would happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. something was trying to help us, but something didn't want us to go. Mm -mm. So, and what was weird is you, you guys, use REM pods quite, o quite often. Mm -hmm. yeah. We stuck a REM pod in um, one of the rooms that just felt off, like they didn't really want us in there, so we just stuck a REM pod and a camera in there. As soon as we leave, the REM pod starts going crazy. But every time we'd go up to the door, open the door, dead quiet. they'd stop if we went in the room. But then when we leave the room, it just would start going off and off and off. Like they wanted us to come back in that room because maybe that room was where we'd be the most safe. Mm. We didn't or, listen to that because we didn't know. Or the most vulnerable. We couldn't yeah, really exactly. decipher that one. 50-50 chance. Mm -hmm. so. so we took our shot and ended up in the worst room, in my mm -hmm. opinion. <laughs> but that's how it is sometimes. What did you fear would happen? Had whatever that was, the demon entity, gotten into the room? Like what, What's going through your head? We didn't know what we were going to fear, honestly, because a lot of these locations that we do, we do this thing where we don't look up everything about the place, like the hauntings, because we want to go there. For some validation. For, for validation. Mm -hmm. We'll go there, um, get all the evidence, whether it's crazy or not, and then we go home, and that's when we do our history portion. It's the next morning. So then we research all and we start losing our minds because whatever happened to us that night is there on the history. So um, for an example, there... There was a time where we were in uh, one of the main rooms with him and he felt like somebody had grabbed onto his shoulder, tried to pull him back and started whispering in his ear, just like mumbling and whatever. When we got home, because we were confused about that, that was weird, you know, he, he felt super unsafe, felt like he was getting target, targeted. And um, the next morning when we did the research, did the history portion, I ran upstairs to his room and he, I woke his ass up and I was like, yo, so apparently there is a woman that tries to protect you from what is evil in the hotel. And what she is very well known to do is to grab you around your neck and try to pull you away. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. And the trippy thing, like his, his physical experience that he was having that night sort of mirrored one of, like I said, Virginia City's very near and dear to us. The old Washoe Club here is no where- Washoe. Yeah, River. I hate will not step that up place. Why? He got he got three of the. They look like cat scratches, but we have him on camera. He never touched himself. The whole the whole encounter. He was right dead center in the camera frame, and he has these three gnarly cat scratches, like 
from the top of his thigh all the way almost up to his upper chest. No way. Yeah. And it was it was pretty gnarly. That yeah, one shook him up. Nipple. So so basically in, in the washer club, uh the main room upstairs, Scotty's room, right? Scott. Yeah. Scotty's room. Uh we were up there and I remember seeing like a chalkboard that said hell. Was it hell? No, Someone wrote hell. something up there. It was it, it, it was, was something. Creepy. It said get out. It said get out or something. And then after I saw it, moments later, we got get out on our device. Mm. And then out of nowhere, uh, we had a little action cam that was facing down the stairs. And that flew off the camera mm. or uh, off the, the night tripod. And then, like, we caught it all on camera, that, that section. And then we have a still cam pointed at me because I'm, you know, I'm the main cam. And uh, you could see the moment that whatever, like, got me. Like, it was a pretty big impact, so I, like, felt nothing but, like, fire. And I freaked out, and I pretty much dropped my camera, and, yeah, I don't really like that place. There's were you, were a, you a, doing anything to no. instigate, nope. anything like that, no. just there? No, I, I'm pretty respectful. I mean... The one thing we did do, sorry to interrupt, the one thing we did do you. was there used to be a music box. <laughs> there used to be a music box in there that we did Asshole. play. So we weren't too sure if that had something to do with it. Mm. But that was one thing. Yeah, we'll be there in two months. It's uh, it's a great place. It's awesome. Um, you're definitely gonna catch stuff. Yo, you you really sure. just said F- that place. I hate it. And well, then went, it's a great place. It's awesome. I mean, ob- obviously, like to get evidence, yeah. right? It's gonna be a good place. I don't like it personally because I felt like I was attacked, and every time I've been back there, I never wanted to go back. But mm. I mean, you want to have somebody on edge when you come back. Grab his hat. Bring him. <laughs> bring him. I mean, Stick I'll do it Scotty's if I absolutely room. have to. But. Um, All right, you absolutely have to. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Cuff me and throw me in the car. How long ago was it when you got scratched there? Oh, like over a year ago, yeah. And have you went back a couple times since then? We went back Once. one time, and uh, it still felt the same. Actually, didn't... So there's a, a lady with no eyes there. Yeah. We saw her that night, no? Mm-hmm. There's a, a notorious photograph of a woman that stands behind people when they take selfies in this p- specific room, mm. and she has hollow eyes. They're just all black. You can't see her eyes. It's really trippy. Like, the photo they'll show you when you take the tour, you'll see, is gnarly. It's so scary. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so Scotty, the one that we think is who scratched River the first time, didn't show up for us the second time. We even went back up there kind of not with a vengeance in a negative way, but with a, to be like, hey, Scotty, what's the deal? You know, what did we do? What did he do? Why'd you do it to him? And we didn't find any answers that way. Mm. So I, I don't know, maybe, it, you know how it is. You go to these places, it might depend on the day, the night, mm. yeah. what happens, like you said, if you triggered it or something. But we've yeah. had a few things that have almost made us kind of think twice about going to these places and doing what we do. When you went back, did you get anything? To feel like you were being attacked more than the rest of the group? Uh, I mean, the whole time I felt like I was, like, being targeted in a way. Um, it's it's kind of hard to explain. Like, you, you go through something that's, like, life-changing. That was the first time I've ever gotten scratched or anything like that. And it was massive scratches. And, you know, being on camera, showing everyone that I didn't do it to myself. Like, I mean, you can only say it's, it's as real as, you know, people will believe. It, it mm-hmm. is what it is. But, yeah, when I went back there... Uh, I did feel very weird, for sure. But like I said, it's a great place. It's intense. not so great for me. <laughs> but I have a. I'm not trying to stir shit up, but I'm curious to hear your answer on this. You're doing it <clears throat> because I heard you say that you have to like set up cameras everywhere sure. to validate your evidence. Do you find that extremely frustrating? That it, it feels like now you have to work five or ten times harder to validate evidence than. I feel like it was like a year or two ago. Because, I mean, we, we even talked about, like, you're stuck in kind of an editing pigeonhole. Mm-hmm. I'm stuck in an editing pigeonhole. And th- that problem is arising from the need to set up 15 cameras and track every single device and every single audio recorder and every single element. Like, like are you, are you, do you find it that it's validating that you have to do that? Or do you find it a little frustrating that there is now this overwhelming need to like overly document, cover every square inch of everything. Like if we have stuff that happens off camera, hmm. we're at a point now where even if it's like the best shit ever, we just don't even include it. Yeah. Because we just know that it's like, yes. everyone's just gonna roast you and be like, oh, it's not real, it didn't happen, it didn't happen. But some of our best shit happens just like slightly out of frame because 
you can't put 18, 20 cameras in a mill, you know, and cover every floor and every corner and everything. So I'm right. just wondering how you guys feel about that. Was it a choice or was it necessity? In my opinion, uh, some of the best stuff that we've caught in was from X cams. So like we've had weird things happen when we're all four in a room um, and like without those X cams, it wouldn't have happened. I mean, it would have obviously happened, but we wouldn't have seen it in the editing process. Yes, it's a pain in the to edit that many cameras into one video, but if they're irrelevant, then what's the point? I mean, yeah, it is annoying, but we're not used to like one or two cameras. We're used to like five or six. So you've, always, you've always had that many since always, the start? Yeah. Ah, okay. So we started with one. Yeah. We just started with one camera, we and then we started with one camera, oh, like a GoPro, yeah. and then we, started, then we added and added and added, and now we're at a point where we literally have like no less than nine, ten cameras. We started with one. You started with one? Yeah. Okay. It was like two episodes, though. Because we had zero money. We ended up just kind of like quitting our jobs and hoping for the best. Mm. So we, we bought the uh, Canon T5i and just okay. kind of filmed with that because it was like... And the G7X or Mark yeah, yeah. II. Yeah. yeah, G7X Mark II. That one it was small, digital. I mean, it was cheap. Decent quality, I mean, but more or less. It was fantastic. We always wanted more cameras because it just made more sense to us. Yeah, I mean, same thing. We started with like a 70D, right? It's like a five or $600 camera. Yeah. And we'd use our Dang. phone flashlight as yeah, our light, yeah. you know, and yeah. we didn't even have mics. He still doesn't have a mic on his camera. Yeah. He's been doing YouTube for seven years. How dare you? To yeah. put <laughs> a mic. Fuck <laughs> mic. They are such a pain in the ass, but when you catch good stuff, you're like, thank you whoever's out there. Yeah. We actually uh, run our mics into recorders that are Velcroed to the camera so that if we lose any audio from the mic or anything, because you know how that dies sometimes. Yeah, you do a splitter, right? So you never know. You, uh, you got some audio at least. So yeah. So you can make something out of it because there's been locations that we've gone to where we lost all of our audio. And how are you going to make an episode? I mean, I guess you could do an old black and white film with no audio, but... How do you know? Yeah. You yeah. know? It's kind of weird. So, what's, yeah. your, uh, what's your dream piece of evidence you could ever capture? What's the thing that you want to see? What's the, what's, what's ghost the one? Titties. Ghost titties. <laughs> hey. I mean, we're let's twins. be honest, right? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> what's the thing, though? Like, what would you want to capture? Like, do you want to see someone get dragged across the floor? Like, are you looking Hell levitation? Yeah. Are you looking, like, one day you speak a different language that you've never even heard of in your life? Like, what's, what's the thing... That you'd be like, this would be like if I if I died with this is my only piece of evidence and this is my legacy in the paranormal world, what would that thing be? I'd go out with a nice, nice big bang, something like that. I mean, if it took me out, a nice big bang. Yeah, to where you want to be like, murdered, like a no, not oh. murdered, <laughs> like a, like <laughs> something that's deep. so f- good. But like what? But what unfortunately, I I'd, I'd die in the making or like. But in the what whole would process. that thing what? be? Yeah, what? Something He's asking like, like lifting what? my f- up and throwing me over a railing, and I'm like, you know. <laughs> I want to deal with Gun some, four. like, exorcism, like, some, like, you know, flopping around like a fish, throwing up all over myself. Like, Bro, I got a mansion you can live in. <laughs> Just get him drunk. <laughs> I would love to, if, if we caught, like, one thing, you know, of course, everyone's had their, their crazy apparition or their silhouette of a person that they've caught, stuff like that. It's their crazy audio evidence. But if we had one thing, I think it would be sort of along the lines of what they're talking about. Not quite some exorcism stuff with your head spinning around and vomiting everywhere. That'd be pretty good, too. Say you could physically make someone appear. Explain their name and their story. Like, if they could give you their name, what happened to them, how they died, and then they just vanished in front of your eyes on camera. Like a you, Tupac hologram. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you, couldn't, you, couldn't, you couldn't deny that. You know? Yeah. What's yours, Corey? You can, you can only capture one more thing. That's it. It's kind of what he's saying. Like, I truly, like, it's, it'll probably never happen just because of how outrageous it is. But if we could have a camera set up somewhere and literally just someone would walk into the room and they're, you know, they're on the camera and they're decently close to the camera, like, we can just see everything exactly what they look like. It looks like a real person and then they just fade away. I think that would be like the best evidence you could possibly get. Just literally watching someone that looks like a normal person just fade away. You guys have those times though when you're like investigating, you see something corner your eye and you're like, dude, I swear, I swear I saw that. Mm -hmm. What if that was that moment, but you missed it? I know. Multiple times. I feel like like spirits do that on purpose. 
Like they're like purposely like if they're gonna do something insane, insane, like they're gonna make sure it's off camera. Mm-hmm. Like they somehow know, mm-hmm. like you know, even old old spirits like from the like seventeen hundreds, like oh, it's got a damn camera again. Yeah, yeah for the first time ever uh, during this tour. I mean, been doing this since twenty sixteen. Uh, we were at Eloise uh, Asylum in Detroit and go sitting with a group of people that I just met, you know, an hour before, and we're probably I don't know hour and a half right into into the investigation, something like that. And myself and two other uh, ladies, we all saw the exact same thing in the exact same place at the exact same time. And every once in a while, like, I would see something and I'd be like, whatever, you're tired, your eyes play tricks on you. But I looked at it, I went like that, I saw them, they were looking like that. All three of us are like, wow. we all saw that, right? And then instantly I'm like, hold on, I think that's the end of the building. And all three of us, like Marty was there actually, all three of us ran that way, jumped over one of our devices that was laid out, ran and literally that was the end of the building. There was no fire escape. There was no open window. That's there was crazy. no staircase. And like to me, and it wasn't covered. I didn't have a camera. Like yep. we, we didn't time. have a camera there. But to me, the validation of having them see it and like literally all in a moment's notice, like catch that. It's such a bummer I didn't catch it on camera. Yeah. But like that's one of those moments where it's like, that was super cool. And I'd never shared, I'd never seen something like that with other yeah. people. I had uh, I had something happen as well about two weeks ago, and I was just like, F-. I wish that was on camera because of how insane it was. We were on the second floor. Sorry, we we're on the second floor of this building, and we go, you know, we're standing in this hallway, and what we're mainly focusing on is the story is that there is ch- like shadow children that are constantly just running up and down the hall. And so we're in this hall for not even 30 seconds. Like I haven't even put the box down yet to get out all the tools. And we had Evan with us. And Evan's normally our camera guy, but he was joining us to investigate that night instead of filming. And I turn around and look at him and I literally see like behind him coming from the ceiling, it looked like an arm reached down and like swung like that, okay? And I was like, dude, I just saw like the weirdest thing behind you. It looked like something was swinging down to grab you. And he's like, what did it look like? And I was like, it kind of looked like an arm in a way. And then we kind of just brushed it off and I was like, okay, we're trying to, you know, communicate with the shadow children. So we focused on that the whole night. And then that end of the night, it's like 6, 7 a.m., and I'm talking to the employees, and I was telling her, I was like, yes, we got really good evidence of the shadow children. The music box was going off. They were answering questions, and she goes, did you guys see any of the shadows that climb on the mm-hmm. ceiling? They try to reach down and grab for you, oh, and my shit. heart just dropped. I was like, holy yeah. that's what I saw, and I didn't even know about it. That's wild. What's fun about that is your guys' research technique, like the order in which you do it, is somewhat similar to how we do it because normally I'm the only one that researches yeah. before going in. Yeah. So normally, and like if, all right, when, on these investigations, we've been splitting up, but normally I'm the one who would know like that's a common thing and it would happen and I'd be like, ooh, you don't know what I know. <laughs> and I'm just so like, it hold, is true. I'm just like holding it in. I just like get to watch and see everything. And then normally when it's over, I'll show them like the the articles or the old like videos or the pictures and be like, by the way. It just works so much better that way. I mean, like when you're, when you know things and you go in there, that's what you're aiming for. And what if you don't get it? Then you're like, damn, dude, like I thought that this was going to happen. All these stories, so on and so forth. I don't want to know. Sometimes. If it's haunted, people say it's fucking haunted. I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm going to go try. Yeah. The I flip bet. side, though, is sometimes it's kind of nice to know. Yeah. Because when you have those things happen, then can, I go, you can react. I go, oh, I think I know who we're talking to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know a little bit more. It's a much faster way of, like, opening that channel of conversation when you already know a few things about them. Yeah. And then you focus. So it's kind of like that weird, it's very fun, like, when he doesn't know anything. And then I know, like, a lot of the more details about it. And we can kind of, like work together on it. So it's, it's kind of like that weird catch 22 yeah. where I, I've learned that sometimes when we know more, we can like open up and bond with the spirit or entity so much faster Yeah, because we already know like yeah. what they, what they like. And you know, that's like people like bring cigarettes and offerings because it's a history. Of yeah. It. When I'm saying like, we, uh, you know, don't want to know all of the information. I mean, we do like, we'll find out if there is a little kid there or something evil and, but we won't go too much in detail on like what they're known to do. For so sure. like we do go in there and um, we'll get a couple of names from, you know, who's ever giving us the tour. I just don't want to know what they do because if it happens to us and then I find that kind of research that it's happened to somebody else, that is what 
makes me always get the chills when I'm editing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's oh. really, it's re we've gone to a lot of unknown locations recently that don't really mm -hmm. have too much documentation, like yep. even paranormal investigators at all. And we've gotten these like really thoroughly detailed stories that now like when this tour is over, I have to go back and I have to like basically pull county archives yeah. and state archives and like see if I can actually line up um, things that have happened. And to me, that's like the more fun part as well. It's like when you get something really cool and like, okay, well, can you back it factually yeah. to show that it wasn't just like a series of like three hours of just coincidences and you can actually prove that these people were there and like these things really happened there. So yeah, it's, it's really fun to try and like solve these mysteries yeah. too. You get to investigate just one place, all three of you, one more place. That's it. One final investigation. Where are you going? My grave. You're going to investigate your own grave pre your burial? That's literally like you get to investigate your own grave, your own body. But that's I, just, that's just talking lie. to yourself, bro. If you did, if you did die. <laughs> I do that already. <laughs> if you did die, I, I guarantee you we would try it. I'd, I'd be so f sad. <laughs> I'd be like, damn, dude, why'd you have to go? He's got to go pee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I drank way too much water before here. That whole thing was full, by Damn. Okay. All right. So where are you guys going? One final um, place, one location, whether you've been there or not. I mean, not. the hype is so, so high and everybody wants to go to Conjuring House. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to. I mean, I try to book it. It's so booked right now that mm -hmm. you can't go for another maybe year or two unless if somebody cancels. Yeah. You got to know them. Now they have new owners. Yep. It's a whole different ball game now. So one that I've always wanted to do that you guys have done it's one of my favorite episodes i have seen a few of your things is uh preston castle here it's pretty yeah. damn close to the here. one that i literally didn't get to investigate because i got obliterated yeah. 24 yeah. hours of just at the most worst pain i've ever that's been that's when in. you got that sick one. right in the bed yeah dude yeah that, that was, was horrible i literally don't wasn't remember. josh there too uh yeah. yeah 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 i literally do not remember the next 24 hours like it, i just woke up and dude this, actually the cecil sucks. hotel would be pretty cool too Mm. Cecil? Yeah. yeah. I liked how uh, you guys had Josh break dance in the front. <laughs> yeah. What is the secret the Cecil knock? knock. The, the Cecil yeah. knock, yeah. Dude, that the was B-boy so Cecil knock. Yeah, was the funny. dance battle and Matt, the shirtless yeah. Uh, concierge. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. That's Definitely. a tough question, though. There's so many. There's yeah. too, there's almost too many to pick from. We we have a story to read from someone in the audience, so how would you like to proceed here? Do you... Uh, how how uh, theatrical do you guys feel? <laughs> What do you want me to do? You guys want me to like do a backflip off of that? I don't know if I can backflip anymore. I don't know what the story is, so I don't know if it even works. It works. There's a bunch of stories in one. Okay. Okay, so what do you want us to do? You want so us to act maybe it out? you yeah. could reenact the story. It's, it's something we've done a few shows, but it's only if you want to. If not, no pressure. I can try. Do you want to try? Make fun of me if you want. I don't care. <laughs> For the record, the premise of the live show, which is so funny that we haven't even gone over it yet. No one really knew what the live show was going to be because it's like a thing that we created uh, and no one's seen it before. But obviously you've seen it. It's a mix of comedy and storytelling and paranormal stories. But the bulk of it as well is to bring a community together that probably all believe or have some sort of respect for the paranormal into one space. The second part is everyone who has a ticket was given an option to submit a story of a paranormal encounter, and we read through all of them, and we're always looking for the ones that we haven't seen before that we kind of want to read, and then not only read them, but then we can bring you on stage and like acti actually get to learn a little bit more about these stories. The reason is, if we did it at home and we read it, we'd read the story and be like, cool, next one. But now we can have a conversation about it. The second part is, now you all can realize that the person who wrote this story is a real person and is also in your community, relatively in your community in order for you all to be here. So that's kind of the main thing is to make it a little less taboo to talk about paranormal experiences because we've met so many people that have held it in for literally 30, 40, 50 years and never told anyone. And then when they finally share it on stage, all these people come up to them after the show and be like, I've had the same thing. I've never told anyone either. So that's like kind of the big bulk of why we do this as a live event. Um, not just to talk about lollipops full of semen. So it's a little bit more. We did win, though. <laughs> so and this, is, this is a story that's been submitted by someone who's here tonight. And then after we read it, uh, we'll bring you up on stage. And then we'll have a conversation with you about it and how it impacted you and just kind of talk about it. Yeah. So do you want to read it? Or do you want me to read it? Well, there's, so there's a couple. So I can read one short one, and then okay. you can read the second one. All right. Make sure you read it exactly how it's written. Oh, okay. Yeah. To a T, yeah. yeah. To yeah. the T. Yeah. Okay. You guys ready? In yeah. a voice. 
Yep. Wait, so just us have to reenact it? Yeah, yeah. Mike, Mike's down, stand no, up. No, you're kidding. Oh, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. This is this At is, this very moment. Yeah, right now, yeah. All right. <laughs> and the first story goes like this. We had just moved into our new home 11 years ago, and I was by myself while everyone was out. I won't be by myself. <laughs> It was around 11 p.m. when I suddenly felt like someone was watching me. (laughs) He's being watched. Oh my gosh. Turning slowly, I saw a woman that had a pale white face. Wait, this is like a perfect three person story. (laughs) I'm pretty pale. (laughs) Hey, baby. It was dark around her. White, yellowish eyes, and she was in all black. She was looking straight before sensing me and slowly turning and staring into my eyes. Yeah, look at me. Yeah, why are you looking at me? Where are we in the story? She pointed her finger at me. And said, you. You. (laughs) I ran away as fast as I could. (laughs) Naruto ran? (laughs) And the lady chased me up the stairs. (laughs) 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 Then I ran back down the stairs and she was still following me. (laughs) However, by now, we've became pretty good friends. (laughs) Sorry, I was just making all of that up. I'm going to go back to the actual story. (laughs) Slowly turning and staring into my eyes. That ran a chill down my spine. She slowly smiled at me, showing her sharp teeth, which made my blood run cold. I blinked, <laughs> and she was gone. Wait, I, what did you do? I blinked, and she was gone. <laughs> <laughs> I called my dad, who came looking, dad? and said no one was that tall Daddy? to see... <laughs> Where I saw her, years later, my ex-best friend moved next door, and her little brother saw the same figure in her room staring at them. (laughs) You guys did thumbnail face? (laughs) I'll I'll go be the friend. Okay, Okay, you go be the friend. I'm the friend, okay. So you saw the same thing? Yeah. It was scary. It was that piece of shit. Yeah. Oh, It's a small one. Sorry. I'm daddy. (laughs) Oh my God, Jesus Christ. (laughs) When The Conjuring 2 came out and I seen The Nun for the first time, it was nearly the same thing that I saw. It's Convolio! (laughs) Then... The Nun needs TP for its bunghole. (laughs) The Nun started chasing us. Oh, (laughs) s***. And we all froze with fear. Once we got from behind stage, we all froze with fear. Why are you behind your dad like that? Okay, that's the end of the first story. <laughs> that's, that's the end. Wow. That was, that was amazing. That was the first one. We're warmed up now. All right, round that two. Was, that was great. Are you in the story with him then? Yeah, I'm in this. Did we do okay? You did great. I love that this is like an opera house, <laughs> and visually it's so much more striking. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are all great. Story number two, and it begins. I was on FaceTime in the kitchen, making a snack. Pizza rolls, actually, with a bottle of Sprite. We, uh, me and my friends tried doing the Sprite chugging challenge together. 
can't burp, man. You can't don't burp. burp. You got to do burp. the whole thing without burping, man. And while we were doing it, in the corner of my eye, I saw a woman in a white nightgown, dressed to scantily, <laughs> posing, enticing me. She hit me with her best dance moves. Do you know what your dance oh, move is? <laughs> <laughs> and she had long black hair. She walked around our table where we were doing the Sprite Chugging Challenge. She looked at us and said, You a dumb You a dumb I can do it in one shot. Y'all some pussies. Y'all some pussies! Then before stopping and staring at me, and before disappearing, I immediately threw everything away and at her. Oh. Oh, it wasn't us, though. And then I ran to my bedroom. Then another night I was laying in my room with my dog. He wouldn't stop on the carpet. So I had to rub his face in it. He has to rub your face in your fecal matter. How did you get over there? I looked up for once. How are you over there? Dumb dog, goddamn. So as I was saying, my dog on the carpet, and he wouldn't stop, so I had to rub his nose in it. <laughs> and then the room turned cold, and he started growling <laughs> at the edge of the bed before hopping behind me. <laughs> then a big black hand with sharp claws came up and grabbed my ankle before slowly going under my bed again. <laughs> and then the door to my bedroom opened by itself many, many times. Windows slammed. I would hear footsteps. Then I would hear tap dance steps. I would hear crumping steps. Crumping. <laughs> and at one point, I think I heard salsa footsteps. <laughs> and then the bathroom door would open on its own, and I started seeing shadows walking around at night. My papa asked my sister on Christmas. Sister, I mean daughter. <laughs> to close the front door and as she rose up a black hand slammed the door shut in front of them <laughs> I was woken up the next morning with scratch marks on my back and a handprint on my inner thigh <laughs> then there was another handprint higher up on my thigh Strangely, there was two handprints, one on each thigh, but the fingers were pointed upward. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what is that? Yo, I'm crying, I can't read the page. Oh, f my eyes, dude. Oh, I'm watering. And then I had a nightmare one night of a demon sitting in the corner of my dining room, which is over here. The dining room's over here. That's the bedroom. Dining room. <laughs> Sitting in the corner of my dining room, trying to attack me from within the darkness. I saw its. <laughs> but I saw its yellowish eyes and its mouth snarling. <laughs> snarling as if it had rabies. An incurable case of rabies. The most severe case, we have, I said rabies, not COVID. The most <laughs> severe case of rabies. But before they could attack me, a white light appeared behind me and my great grandmother stepped out in front of me, banishing it back to hell. Be gone, <laughs> 
It worked, but for safe measure, she repeated it in Latin. But for some reason, my grandmother knew the demon was a thought. And then she realized she was a thought herself. (laughs) At this point, her grandchildren knew Granny got that good dump truck. And then grandma took me, into her, took me into her arms and squeezed me tightly. But she was trying to wake me and tell me, it's all going to be okay. Then my aunt repeated what she heard on TV. She said, if there's something here, show yourself. She said that the blanket she was using started to be pulled off and kept tugging on it. (laughs) Safe to say, she never did that again. There was a lot more activity at that house. There was one time in particular where we were all gathered in the living room. (laughs) We were all sitting on the couch watching our favorite horror movie. What's a, what's a good movie? Uh, what's a good movie? Well, the Mummy. <laughs> oh my God. We were actually watching The Ring and The Grudge back to back. And as we were staring through the TV, we saw an entity crawl out of the screen. Ah! And then- <laughs> Are you a prostitute? No, at this point, you're now the, the, the evil demon that crawls yeah, out of the come. TV in the movie. And then it crawled onto the couch and laid across our laps. It didn't seem evil. It actually seemed like she wanted a friend. I just want a friend. And then my grandmother came in from behind the couch. And Granny was like, I'm still a bad b- I'm a thought. And then they all lived happily ever after. <laughs> that whole story was real? Uh, probably 90% of what I read is real, yeah. By the grandma Who, being a thought? Whoever lived that. <laughs> <laughs> whoever lived that, your grandma's wild. Um, okay, She'd be and then, busting it down. Uh, let's just do this. We'll, just, we'll have her come sit next to us. And then uh, Aaliyah, Aaliyah, would you mind coming up? Is it Aaliyah? Aaliyah, please come, come here join us. Corey, we'll share a mic right now. Okay. We'll Welcome this, we'll to swiftly. the stage. <laughs> he just, what the f***? God damn, he just met, it's, a t- it's a small couch. Are you sitting right here? Right in the middle. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Why'd you scoot it back? <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, you'll sit here. Okay, what, uh, what percentage of that story was accurate? All of it, besides the snack part. Besides <laughs> the snack part. Where you made up the snack. Yeah, there was no Sprite challenge. <laughs> no. Okay, what period of time did all of this go on for? Because this, this is a lot. From 2010 until 2020. For ten, this ten is 10 years, ten years worth of stories. Of, of stories. We just moved out of our house a year ago. And the new people moved in, and I would just heard they moved out. <laughs> okay, so under a year. So just so I stayed could, at, at your old place. Uh, I lived in Lodi, California. Okay. Wow. To recap the factual uh, points, you did see a woman that was pale in the white face with yellowish eyes, yellowish eyes, and she was staring straight at you. Um, you did have to call your father. You were on FaceTime making a snack, and then you saw the woman in the nightgown again, staring at you another time. You were laying in your room one night when, uh, with your dog, and then he started growling and then hid behind you. There was a black hand with sharp claws that came up and grabbed your ankle, and then went slowly went under your bed again. And you did have windows slammed. You did hear footsteps. You did have a bathroom door opening. You were seeing shadow figures walking around at night. And the instance with your father and your sister with the black hand again on Christmas was real. You were woken up with scratch marks on your back. You did have a handprint on your inner thigh. And you also had nightmares of a demon sitting in the corner of your dining room trying to attack you again with yellowish eyes and a snarling mouth. And you also did have the instance where your great-grandmother 
uh, stepped out in front of you, banishing it back to hell. And your aunt did repeat that and did have an instance where a blanket That's was wow. started to be pulled off and was wow. kept tugging on it. So all of those things. That is things, 100% true. Okay. Respect. That is to recap the actual factual moments of the story. And if anything, my aunt is right there that had the blanket pulled off. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> and did you ever try leaving this house? No. We actually encouraged it a little bit towards the end before we moved in. We bought our own cat balls. I am very good with dowsing rods compared to the rest of my family that they don't work. And then we just bought our own spirit box and we just dabble in it every now and then. And then we go into my grandma's room where she has all her saints and sit in there for a little bit. A true ghost hunter in the making. (laughs) This is how it all starts. I've been, I'm very sensitive to it all. How did this start? Like, what, what caused it's this? It's been ever since she was young that something has been oh. around the family. And then my uncles and my dad and them, they would have parties where they would play with the Ouija board. Mm. So that could have been more or less what could have happened. Mm. And we left it at the house beforehand. And my uncle said when we were, they were leaving, finally, that the board was glowing green. And it was not happy that we what? were leaving. So... <laughs> so you think that it's... I think, it's upset with, I think it's upset with us for leaving it behind and not properly getting rid of it. They've tried to burn it. Obviously nothing happened to it and they threw it away and it's came back to us. Um, we've had hats go across the room. We had anything you can imagine in that house. Would that mean that a spirit is attached to the family? Yes. Not just one person. We think it's to the entire family. But it's been affecting, lately more, it's been affecting me more than anybody else. I woke up maybe like a month ago with four fingerprints on my leg. And I do have a picture of that, that where I woke up with that. What? Wow. Have you guys ever thought of a reason why it might be attached to you or your no. family? Or there's who no, it might there's be? no reason for it to be. Our house that all those stories are in from, we found out maybe halfway into living that multiple people have killed themselves. Upstairs, wow. someone hung themselves, and then in my bedroom, in my grandparents' bedroom, they shot themselves in the face. Is this the same house that they would do the Ouija board in? No, that would be the house where all these stories came from. Hmm. Wow. We would have doors open. My window would slam shut. Um, I've seen people peek their heads around the corner and look at me and then hide back. I've seen shadow figures. My grandpa and my sister seen the hand close the door. I seen the face in the window. Um, we had a lot. I had I woke up. I woke up with scratches, bruises, handprints. Then the hand that grabbed me by the ankle that scared me so bad. I had to call my grandpa in the other room to come get me, because it was late, wow. like two o'clock at night, and I was so scared that if I got off this bed, I know where it went, and I don't want to risk it coming out and getting me, because I don't want to go under there with it. So that, that means at a certain point, though, you were embracing it, right? It was before I embraced it. Before you embraced it. Yeah. Was there ever a desire to cleanse your house, cleanse yourself, your family? We have holy water in our house. We, had, we have blessed holy water. We have holy water from Jerusalem that we use. My uncle actually came to our house and blessed it. And me and my dad were sitting like this. He was blessing the house, and he went to my dad. Nothing came out. So he was like, went to the side of my dad, and it came out. Have you guys tried Palo Santo wood? No, we have not. It's just but another he, way of trying I got to holy water on me, and I had a headache right after. Interesting. So, so are you the one haunting the house? I hope not. <laughs> the, the demon's just like hitting I, on you. I He's hope, not even trying to attack you. He's just like, come here, I like you. I, I hope not, <laughs> honestly. Because that's what it's seen, but it, that hasn't happened since. I haven't had headaches like that since the holy water incident. But I'm, I'm always around it. I'm, we have a, my grandmother has a saint in her closet. There's a bunch of different saints and the, the candles and anything like holy oil and water. Crosses, I wear crosses, they don't bother me. It was just that one instance that that headache occurred. Is your house fine? The house you guys live in? Hell uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have a museum going on in our house. So oh, dude, have, so do I. Yeah. Nice. It just kind of happens to all of us, you know? Yeah, yeah. You just start collecting stuff that's given to you that's haunted. That's but cool. I think for you, I think that might have been like that one moment that something tried to take over. Yeah. Maybe you got on time. I know it's like a headache, and but I've heard that when somebody is like possessed, 
and they go through the whole process of, you know, like, for an example, exorcism. They, like, get super sick after. Oh, yeah, I've they'll, heard of They'll that. run a fever, they'll mm-hmm. sweat, and so on and so forth. But since it was just like a, it was just a mild fever, right? Or It was headache. just a headache, no, so nothing So maybe more. that's what it was. It would only kind of make sense since of what yeah. you were dealing with. So. Have you seen that thing, like, since recently? Recently, it's just in our new home, it's slowly picking up again. That's mm-hmm. where I got the bruises okay. on my leg. Uh, we've had, we put cat balls in our house just in case. So we have one in the closet that went off twice in a night. We have one in the door frame in the doorway and that went off. One in the hallway went off. So we put one in downstairs and that one hasn't gone off. Aren't you afraid that you are encouraging more activity in the same home you live in without a way to create the divide? Because you're encouraging yeah. and educating them on how to contact you. Yeah. Didn't and it's the like same that. home you live in. So aren't you afraid that you're literally opening like a Pandora's box here? I didn't think about it like that. We haven't, we haven't, we haven't dabbled in it in a cool, in a really long time. Cause it was right. Maybe after we moved in, it's been a year now. Uh, I put my um, dowsing rods in my grandma's room on the altar. <laughs> Just keep them there. Mm. Uh, she bought a spirit bar- box. We used it once, never touched it again. Cat balls. I think they died out. Yeah. We haven't encouraged anything recently. Yeah. To my acknowledgement. But every so often, like when you go up the stairs at night, you feel somebody watching you from downstairs because it's so dark. Yeah. Or we will be on the couch watching TV and the stairs will creak like somebody was walking there. Gotcha. And it's, we're watching a Disney movie. Yeah. Oh, that's what gets them the most. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to have a good time. <laughs> well, uh, they are know, too. <laughs> tread, uh, tread carefully with your investigation in your own home because you might be creating something that you're going to have to live with. Um, I lived with that one for 10 years. Right, but that one was at free will. This one you're literally teaching and kind of creating a bond with. But you think it's the same entity? It just Um, followed you to a new house? No, it hasn't been as aggressive as it was at the other house. I think whatever that was that I've seen is still there. I believe it's attached to those two homes that I've seen it and then my ex-best friend seen it next door. I think it's tied to those two homes. When we moved in, our neighbor uh, beforehand, she found a cross wrapped in twine downstairs in the basement and she unwrapped it. Mm. And after she unwrapped it, everything started happening. Mm. So we think it's because of what she's done, everything's just blown up. Mm. So where you're living now, do you feel like it's evil? No. So that's why you're okay interacting with yeah. it because it's it not a bad It doesn't spirit. feel evil at all to yeah. us okay. compared yeah. to our, our old home wars. We were scared to walk in the dark. I had walked with my flashlight everywhere. I would see in the corner of my eyes people moving. Like when I seen the entity walk around the table, I stopped what I was doing and my I was on the phone. They're like, What are you what are you looking at? I'm like, There's a woman walking around my table with a white dress and her hair's on her face. But she looked at me and there was there was no facial features. Got it. It was just blank and then she disappeared and I took off. Dang. Well, I'm very interested to see if she reappears in your new home. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you now you have the devices and maybe an ability if you wanted her to reappear. You have that option. We do. We've been looking to buy more things, but I think we're okay with what we have right okay, now. Okay, that's fair. Because we're trying to understand the spirit box more. We're playing around with it, trying to understand yeah. which is the best way to go with it. Sure. We put headphones on and sat in the rocking chair. Trial and error. Yeah, just stay strong when you're doing that, though. Oh, yeah. You know, good. Don't spirits. let anything get to you. We ain't scared of a no ghost. Dang. All right. Hey, <laughs> better than me. Words. <laughs> yeah, you should hear him. He screams like a little girl sometimes. <laughs> well, I just I like getting scared. Yeah. My friend actually going? watched one of your videos recently from at my work, and he watched you at the Warren Museum, and he told me before I came here, he's like, "Hey, I need to talk to you. I watched that video you showed me of them moving her to the other case." And nothing scares me. But as soon as that case opened, my body went into full chills and I had to turn it off. Mm. That when I went to bed that night, I had three reoccurring nightmares of her. Damn. And that in my sleep, I I didn't feel like I was in my body. And I just felt anxiety. And then I felt myself slam back into my body and I woke up. Wow. (laughs) That's cool. 
it's, it's cool my video could do that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it was right at the part where they, you said envision yourself on the white light. Yeah, yeah. He turned it off. Awesome. Which was bad oh, on his part, why. apparently. Yeah, yeah. That was, that's a, that's a good time. That's on his part. Time. Yeah, the, the visioning yourself <laughs> in the white light is what protects you. Yeah, he this is true. turned it off. <laughs> I told he, he him turned too. it off. I was like, you, after you, you, that, you messed up on your part. <laughs> you could have just, you would have been fine. You would have had no nightmares. Now look what you did. Yeah. Well, well, thank you for sharing your story. Well, Appreciate thank you it. Thank you for letting me. us have some liberties with it as well. <laughs> A round of applause for Aaliyah, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. I'll be honest. You guys are only supposed to be here for a half hour. You want we, us to leave, dude? We'll go. God. Next. <laughs> we talked. It was like, oh, Elvis only like Presley. a half hour, and you guys spent a half hour doing reenactments and talking about some weird toddlers yeah, and that. lollipops and mansions. So Taking it's, us <laughs> from our editing. I can't yeah. believe it. I well, can't uh, believe it. Cool. Well, thanks. Thanks, guys. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, you're welcome, friends. Yeah. yeah, this was a fun show. Yeah.